21st precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah. How'd they break in? Yeah. Yeah. And what's missing? Oh, yeah? And what's the name of the owner there? You are in the muster room at the 21st precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st precinct. Okay. I'll notify the detectives and let you know. Yeah. All right. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It had been a comparatively quiet night, but at 10.30 p.m., the police commissioner and the chief inspector paid a surprise visit to the precinct. I conducted them through the station house and then accompanied them on a tour of the precinct, returning in time to turn out the platoon for the late tour at midnight. After the turnout, the brass signed the blotter and left. I went into my office to read and sign reports and communications prepared by Patrolman Fallon, the 124 man on the job during the 4 to 12 tour. At 12.40 a.m., Detectives Frank Cassidy and Chris Vitale of the 21st Squad were driving south on 2nd Avenue en route back to the station house following their investigation of a stabbing in a bar and grill on 96th Street. Well, listen, what can you do? I asked if you wanted to go. She said it was too much trouble to get a babysitter, come all the way into New York for something like that. And she didn't have a good time at last year. Well, this one was better. At least the food was good. Yeah, so I hear. Mm. Mm. Look, when the light changes, what do you say we go over to that luncheon and see if that Harry showed up yet? We ought to talk to him and find out if he ran into his friend today. Well, he said he'd call me, Deep. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like the looks of that guy. I don't think he's trying to help us. All right. Yeah. Take a look across there in the delicatessen. Isn't the door open? I don't see it. Yeah, you see? Yeah. Pull over there, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it sure is open. Come on. Mm-hmm. With your eyes and my brains, we could make a million dollars. I'll right, hold it at the window, then. Yeah. Oh, it's awful dark in there. Let's take a look at the door. Mm. That's been ginned. Mm. I'll save you still in there. Oh, wait a minute. Reach in and see if there's a light switch. Yeah. No, no, nothing. Oh, the switch box must be in the back. All right, look, you go around behind the counter. I'll go in front. Okay? Yeah. Watch it. On the floor, you know. Yeah. Anything? No. Nope. Okay. Maybe he's still in back. Yeah, maybe. All right, I'll kick open the swinging door. Just throw your light in there. All right? Yeah, go ahead. Cabinet. Yeah. Let's see if we can find a switch box. <clears throat> Nothing on this floor. I'm going to watch those cases. Hold it. What? I thought I heard somebody out front. Yeah. Get him up back there. Watch it. Hold it. The cop. Hmm? Who is it? Who is it back there? The detective. Come out here. Let me see it. What's the hand? A hern. Vitaly and Cassidy. All right. Okay. Come on back here. You know where the lights are? 
There's a switch box over here. Oh, yeah. Well, where were those million dollar eyes, dude? Oh, that's better. That's the hand doors on the post. I got it. It went through a jimmy back where your flashlight. Well, I'm glad you think first and shoot later. Oh, you're the place you're going over, huh? Yeah, it sure does. I guess I better ring in and phone out front. Uh, what's the name of the owner? Hewitt. Victor Hewitt. You better tell the lieutenant to have him notified. He only lives two buildings down. Uh, we'll go wake him up. You stay here, huh? Okay. Come on. Yeah. They did a good job in the front door. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in a minute, then. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like they got too much out of there, huh? No. They made a little mess in the back. They broke open the cabinet. Mm. Oh, that's good, I guess. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll check the mailbox. Yeah. Here it is. Pick the healer. Second front. How's the inside door, huh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, hit the bell. Okay. See that showcase full of sausages there? Yeah. You know what that is? Hmm. That's Polish sausage. That's good stuff, real hot. Ever try any? Mm, no, I don't think so. Hit the bell again, will you? Yeah. Krakow, I think they call it. Krakow? That's the name of a city over there. Yeah, I know. Which came first? The sausage or the city? These guys are sound sleepy, you know. Maybe his bell doesn't work. Maybe. Yeah. What do you want? How do you like this thing? Pull out the tube. Who is it? Oh, yeah. Mr. Healers? <coughs> we detectives, Mr. Healers. Your store's been broken into. The store what? You had burglars. Push the button, open the door, huh? What did they Open the door. We'll come up and tell you about it. How do you serve that sausage? Like an hors d'oeuvre? Yeah, it's good that way. No, I got it. Up and forth front? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a square on this guy before. Another burglar? No. He got stuck up about two years ago. Oh, yeah, those two guys from Jersey. They did about 20 delicate Yeah, that's right. Here, here in the front. Okay. Yeah, they caught him in the act on the 17th, remember? Two men planted in the back when he came in. Yeah. Mr. Harris? Come in. Come on in. I'm putting on my pants. Did you get them? What'd they take? Well, we don't know. You'll have to tell us that. The door was locked. Well, let Jimmy do. Oh. Excuse me. Get the dress, Harris. That's all right. Did they do much damage? No, not too bad. What time did you close up, Mr. Well, about 10.30. What, what time is it now? I was asleep. Quarter to one. Can I go like this? I mean, is it all right? Without a tie? You better put a shirt on. It's cold. Well, I, I got that over here on the rack. Well, okay. Uh, do you got your keys to get back in here? Yeah, I got them. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Do you know who it was? No, not yet. Did you notice any strangers come in the store tonight? Well, it's always dangerous. Not everybody's a regular. I mean, anybody suspicious. That looked around a lot. No, not that I know. Well, go ahead. I got the other one. Mm -hmm. Well, now, what, what do you mean, Jimmy? You broke the front door? Yeah, yeah, that's right. They shoved the bar in between the lock and the door frame, looks like. Mm -hmm. Some people, what some people won't do. Yeah, you're telling me. Caught the policeman, huh? Yeah, well, they put it out on the radio. Oh. That's me. Oh, hello, Captain. What we got? Burglary thing. Captain? Oh. Oh, okay. You were driving by, found the door, Jimmy. New door, I'll need brand new door. No, it can be fixed. Yeah. They don't make them that way anymore. There's one I had. Any money in the cash register, Mr. Hewitt? No, there's no money in there. I take it out and leave it open like that. Every night I do. Roger. Uh, yes, Captain. Have any cash around here at all? Yeah, I had cash. Let's get some of these men back on the job, Sergeant. We don't need them all here. Yes, 
Where did you have this cash? Well, I had it in back there in tin box. Where was the tin box? In that brown cabinet? That's right. But how did you know that? You were talking in. Go ahead, Captain. Yeah. And they got it. They got the tin box. How much did you have in there, Mr. Healy? Oh, I had plenty. I had plenty in there. How much? Four hundred. Four hundred fifty dollars, something like that. How did they find it? How did they know where it was? You see where I had the no, box? Now, be careful, then, Mr. Healy. Don't touch the Way back there, a little tin box behind the ledger. I, I don't see how they could have found it. Anyone could have found it, Mr. Healy. If they knew what they were looking for and where to look. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. Within a few minutes, the job of the uniformed officers at the scene of the burglary was finished. And with the exception of Patrolman Ahern, the first man on the job, they resumed patrol. The detectives took over the investigation, and they continued to question the owner of the delicatessen, Victor Helos, concerning any suspicious customers that may have been in the store before he closed or during the day. At ten minutes after one, other detectives from the police laboratory arrived to make an examination of the premises for latent fingerprints which might have been left by the burglar or burglars. Contrary to the general opinion, fingerprints left at the scene of a crime are seldom in themselves responsible for the apprehension of a criminal. If an arrest is eventually made through other means of investigation, however, fingerprints left at the scene are conclusive and usually the best evidence of the defendant's presence at the scene. In this instance, the experts were able to obtain no readable prints other than those of the proprietor of the store. The investigation by the detectives continued. I went back to the car, operated by Patrolman Farrell, and resumed patrol of the precinct until 2.30 a.m. when I returned to the station house where I completed some more paperwork. At 3.15 a.m., I lay down on the couch in my office after leaving instructions with Sergeant Waters, who was now on telephone switchboard duty, to waken me at 7. At 6.30, the muster room was still, except for the occasional call over the radio monitor and the buzz of the switchboard as the men on post rang in. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yes, he did. Well, there's nobody home there. I had the man on post go by three times. Okay, yeah. TV again, Lieutenant. They wanted to know if we made the notification for the 112th about the man who died in Queens General. I told him we're still trying. Okay. Oh, how about some hot coffee, Lieutenant? No, I just can't. It's supposed to snow. I don't see any sign of it. But well, I can do without it. Don't make me mad. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. All right, 14. Oh, listen. If you see that department of sanitation truck, tell them to handle those garbage cans a little lighter, will you? We had two more complaints from residents on that block yesterday morning. Okay, yeah. I told Meister about the DS truck, Lieutenant. Okay. Oh, hello, Mr. Healy. Sergeant. Good morning. Yeah, we're up kind of early for us. I haven't such a big night. Yeah, I know. Well, i got to open the store. Oh, were you able to get that door to stay closed all right? Yeah, the handyman from my building fixed it all right. Good. Is uh, Captain Kennelly still here? I'd like to talk to him. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Healy. He's here, but he's sleeping. You see, he's supposed to be off at 8 o'clock, but he's got to go down to the federal grand jury and testify about some counterfeit case he made in arrest him. Oh, sorry. Mm, what is it? About the burglary? Well, in a way, yes. Uh, I wanted to talk to the detectives that are working on it. They can tell you anything you want to know. Now, this is personal. I, I know the captain a long time. I'd like to ask him some advice what to do. It's all right for me to wait. Maybe he wakes up. Well, he's telling me to wake him up at 7, but that just about gives him long enough to look over the report and turn out the platoon. Will he come back later today? No, when he leaves here a little after 8, he's not too back on a job until tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to take a chance and wait around, maybe he'll have a few minutes. All right, all right, I'll take the chance. Well, it's up to you. I'll wait for a little while. 
Well, who's up there? Bender's catching. You know, Kenny King just came in a little while ago. Oh. All right. Yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Healer. Let's go upstairs. All right. You want? That way. I'll be up in the detectives. Tried. Tried my best. This way. Go ahead. What can I do with him? Girl without a mother. Kind of hard to do something. You've got to admit it's very hard. I, I tried. Get in there. Is uh, Lieutenant King in his office? Yes, sir. Some of the school. Peter, a buyer clothes. I don't know. Yes. Captain Canelli. Yes, Captain. Morning, Captain. Hi, uh, Matt. Matt, this is Mr. Healers. The stall was burglarized during the night. Yeah, I know. Just leaving the 61 on it. $450, Mr. Healers? Yeah, about. He thinks he knows who did it. Who's that, Mr. Healers? My daughter. My daughter, Elma. You mean he, Jimmy, the door? One of her boyfriends, maybe. I don't know. He ran away from home last week, man. He doesn't know where she is. How old is she? Going on 16. Excuse me. Yeah, sure. 21st squad, Detective Bender. Bender, you know where Beef and Cassidy went? Uh, no, sir. All they told me is they were going out on an investigation. Okay. Uh, just a second, Lieutenant. Somebody's coming up to you. No. And see. Tell him to come in here. Yes, one of the uh, detectives just came in. How sure are you it was your daughter, Mr. Hill? She knew her the cash box was. She was the only one. Come in. You want to see me, Lieutenant? Where have you been since 4.30? I'm investigating this burglary. Oh, Mr. Hill. Oh. Mr. Hill just called Captain Canelli. He knows who did it. And so do I, Lieutenant. I've got her out sitting on a bench. But, uh, Alma? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Hill. She's sorry. The handyman told Cassidy and me all about her and the boy she hung out with in the neighborhood. I want to talk to her. Wait a second, Mr. Hill. Where'd you find her, Vee? She's sleeping in a club room. She's been staying there a whole week. She gave us the name of the boy she talked into breaking open the store. Cassidy went over to his house to get him. I got your tin box and all the money, Mr. Hill. Well, look, I don't want to care about the money. I want to talk to her. Right now, I want to talk to her. All right. Take it easy, Mr. Hill. Bring her in, Vee. Yes, sir. Alma? My own flesh and blood. Come in here. Did the casino for me? Alma. It's all there. You don't have to worry. All the money. Close the door, Abby. I didn't worry about the money. It's only about you. Only about me. Come here and sit down, Alma. That's nice to have you worry about it. Look, don't get smart, Alma. Don't get smart here. All right, listen. Well, she shouldn't get smart. Oh, you want me dumb. Like you want Mama dumb. Don't compare yourself to her. There's enough like her anyway with us. Compare. Why did you break into the store, Alma? get the money to go to Florida. Yeah, with this boy. She was going to Florida with this boy. Yeah, if you want this one, yeah. And then to go to Florida, you had to steal from me? From your own father? See, Captain, I told you, I tried to raise her right. Raise uh, me? Raise me from what? All right, Elma. I like the way he says raise me. You know, something that we didn't raise me. I raised myself. Okay. Why could I raise you right? That was your mother's job. And where was she? She's the only one that had any sense. She got out. She had enough, she got out. What I wanted to do, too, I wanted to get out. No, Elma. And now I'm going to get out. If I went to Florida, I'd get out. If I go to jail, I'd get out. Maybe it happened is okay with me. I don't care. But none of this would have happened if you'd done like I told you. You just stayed home and left those boys alone. What was at home? Not you. You were always in the store. All right. Mama had enough, I had enough. Okay. Maybe now you can take a hint. Please take her outside, will I you? still got something to say. You can say it later. Come on, Alma. I want to say it now. You have to talk to your father. Let's go. Go ahead, talk to him. You've got to talk to him. All right, I got it. Come on, Alma. 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 You see what I've been up against? Yeah. Let me see. I tried. You know I tried, but there was nothing I could do. Just too much of a mother, and you, you, can, you can see that, can't you? Mr. Okay, Hill. She's 15 years old. Well, she's be 16. Do you think it was right to let her be missing from the house for a week and not report it to the police? What could you have done? Nothing. We could have tried. It's more than you did. 
Well, maybe I was wrong about that. You were wrong about a lot of things. But does that make her right? Does that give her permission to break into my store? She and her rowdies, my own daughter? No. I don't know. I'm, I'm so mixed up. I, I know she's my kid. I love her. You, you want me to take her back in the house? I'll take her back in the house and try again. I, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Is that what you want? It's not what we want, Mr. All right, then it's what I want. I, I want to try again. I want to get her back in the house. I want to try again. It's not what you want, either. It's going to be up to the children's court. Children's court? What does the children's court know about it? It's my daughter. All I need is time with her. Mr. Hillis, you had 15 years. Now it's time for someone else. First precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah, all right. Oh, I've got an alarm for you. Okay. A 1952 Chevrolet hardtop. Painted two-tone green. Pennsylvania registration unknown. Unknown. Yeah, that's right, Libby. You keep your eyes open for it. Yeah. All right, let me know if you see it parked in the post. And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct. A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King, Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were John Larkin, John Sylvester, Bill Lipton, Bill Smith, and Lynn Thatcher. Written and directed by Stanley Nierce. I can't speak.